June 25th, St. William of Vericelli, the founder of the religious congregation known as the Hermits of Monte Vergine, came of a Piedmontese family and was born at Vericelli in the year 1085. After the death of his parents, whom he lost in infancy, he was kindly cared for by relations, but at the age of 14 he abandoned his home and set out as a poor pilgrim for Spain not satisfied with the hardships such as a journey entailed he had two iron bands fastened around his body how long william remained in spain is not recorded we hear of him next when he was at melfi in the italian basilicata and then at monte solicoli on the slopes which he remained for two years leading a penitential life with a hermit to this period belongs St. William's first miracle, the restoration of sight to a blind man. The cure made him famous, and to avoid being acclaimed as a wonder worker, he left the neighborhood to stay with St. John of Materia. They were kindred spirits and became close friends. It was St. William's intention to proceed on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, and he would not allow himself to be deterred by John's assurance that God had other work for him him to do he actually started but he had not gotten far when he was attacked by robbers he took this as a sign that john was right and relinquished his journey he now betook himself to a height between nola and benvenanto which was then called monte virgiliano at first william attempted to live there as a hermit but he was soon joined by would-be disciples both priests and laymen he formed them into a community and from the church which he built in the year eleven and twenty four under the name of our lady the mountain has derived its present name of monte vergine or the mount of the virgin the rule he had instituted was most austere no wine meat or dairy produce was allowed and on three days of the week only vegetables and dry bread after the first fervor had cooled murmurs arose and there was a general demand for relaxation of the rule william had no desire to constrain the malcontents though for himself any relaxation seemed unthinkable he therefore chose a prior to rule the community and then departed with five faithful followers with st john of Matera, who now joined him, he made a second settlement at Monte Lassino. Here, however, the barrenness of the soil, the exposed position, and the high altitude made life a misery to all but the most hardy but even for them it was difficult to hold out st john had more than once urged removal when a fire which destroyed their huts compelled them to descend into the valley there the two holy men parted john to go east and found one monastery and william to found another on monte cognato when that community was well established st william treated it as he had treated the monastery at mont vergine he gave it a prior and left it to govern itself at in apulia he founded a monastery for men and at guglietto near nusco he established two communities one of men and the other of women king roger the second of naples afterwards drew him to salerno in order that he might have the benefit of his counsel and help st william's beneficent influence over the monarch was however resented by some at court they lost no opportunity of discrediting and decrying him as a hypocrite and a humbug with the knowledge of the king they set a trap by sending to him on some suspicious excuse a woman of loose life charged with the task of luring him into sin william received her in a room at one end of which a great fire was burning as soon as she began to exercise her blandishments he walked away to the fireplace parted the glowing coals with his bare hands and then stretched himself down at full length in the space he had cleared inviting her to lie down with him her horror was only exceeded by her amazement when he presently arose completely unharmed 
The miracle led to her conversion. She gave up her life of sin and took the veil in the convent of Venosa. As for King Roger, he continued to patronize William's foundations and endowed other houses which he had placed under the saint's control. St. William died at Guglietto on June 25, 1142. He left no written constitutions, but a code of regulations bringing the order into conformity with the Benedictine rule was drawn up by the third abbot general, Robert. The only monastery of William's foundation which exists at the present day is that of Monte Virgin it now belongs to the benedictine congregation and has a much venerated picture of our lady of constantinople to which pilgrimages are frequently made